Hello and welcome to A Little Lily Princess. This is a new series that I'm starting and I this was a relatively non-expensive visual novel so I don't expect it to be all that long. Uh, it is also a sort of a uh, mind wiper from the hot mess that was Oni-chan. Uh, normally I'd advise I'd be more than happy if you were to go and watch other some of my other videos, but I honestly wouldn't put anyone through that mess that was Oni-chan. So we go to something completely different, hopefully. I mean, this is definitely has a very different vibe to it already. Uh, you might recognize the art style for the faces here. That is because it's the um, it's the same artist as it was in Sakura's Space. Though this is unrelated to the Sakura novels. So, I have set the preferences so the music shouldn't be too loud. Uh, there should, and I have also lowered potential effects that might occur in the game. But let's jump right into it and get started. It was spring when Sarah's school life began, but spring in London was nothing like any spring she had known before. Yep. The morning sun was not enough to lift the chill from the stony streets, and the mist of the river blended, the, blended with the smoke of countless chimneys to form a thick yellow fog. In such weather, the gas lamps burned night and day, flickering like stars to horse-drawn horse ships, to guiding horse-drawn ships to their destinations. But the ship that had carried her across the ocean was now a thing of the past. Here, then, was Sarah's new home. It was a big, dull brick house, exactly like all the others in its row, except that one that on the front door there shone a brass plate which was engraved with black in black letters. Miss Minchin's Select Seminary for Young Ladies. Girls, get the round of you, please. Come on, hurry up. We have a new pupil who will be joining us starting today. Her name is Sarah Creeve, and she's reason she's only recently she only recently arrived in England, so you must all all make her feel welcome. How do you do? The room filled with a chorus of gently murmured greetings. Sarah Creeve, for that was her name, looked out upon a garden of strangers. Every face was turned to her, polite and attentive and perfectly foreign. She felt more lost than she had ever been at sea. Sarah dear, as you can see we have pupils here of all levels, but these three are particularly near your age. This is Miss Lavinia Herbert. Charmed. Miss Ermengarde St. John ah. and Miss Jessie Abbott. We are very pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm very pleased to meet you as well. I've never known very many girls my near my age, nor any other age. Sarah's life before that point had not been isolated but sheltered. Her mother had died when she was born, leaving Sarah to be raised by the young, handsome father who was the only relation she had ever known. Some fathers had little time for their children, but Sarah and her papa had always been quite close, reading books and playing games together every day. He treated her as a little confidant, sharing his thoughts with her as if she were his peer and not a very young girl, and listened solemnly to the advice she gave in return, though he didn't always follow it. Sarah had never felt lonely, but it must be said that she had very little experience in making new friends. Sarah's father, Captain Crew, makes his home in India, and he is returning there as we speak. I shall expect you all to be very agreeable to her. Now, Sarah, take your seat. Your father has informed me how very much you enjoy your studies, and I expect you to be credit to this establishment. I'm not certain how to become a credit, but I do wish to learn. This statement was met with a couple of muffled giggles. Confused, Sarah looked back at Miss Minchin for guidance. Take your seat, I said. But which seat is mine? Concerned that she would look disobedient if she hesitated further, she slid into the nearest empty space. No one objected, and she let out a sigh of relief. Nearby, two girls turned to whisper to each other. What a way she has of speaking, so old-fashioned. Hush. 
and her eyes are such a queer colour, a funny looking child to be sure. Well, she isn't pretty as other pretty people are, but there is something about her. She makes you want to look at her again to see what it is. And she has tremendously long eyelashes. Only you would notice such a thing. Girls! Kindly pay attention to your lessons. Yes, Miss Minchin. Oh! Oh! Okay, so it's more like it's a simulator. Ooh, okay, well, <laughs> it's not my, it's definitely not something that I'm strong in, but it's, I will give it my best shot. Okay, choose an activity for Sarah to perform each day. Each activity has three possible outcomes which will change the icons you receive. At the end of the week, Sarah's icons will be collected and turned into resources. Icons are only converted at, at the end of the week. Until then, they can be changed or lost by other activities. Plan the order of your activities in order to get the best results for the week. So, book becomes knowledge, palette becomes artistry, the time is patience, the heart is sympathy, the angel is grace, the cross is belief, and the small running man is vigor. Okay. Hmm. What would I... Hmm. I think we want to go for a fairly smart but also graceful kid uh, who's maybe not so much into vigor and belief. So those are definitely the ones I'm going to focus the least on. Right. Uh, so that is... Okay, so they do different things like this. Also, the reader book is very knowledgeable. Ah, I see. Hmm. Okay, I think we will start by reading. Uh, no, actually, we, since we are completely new, we'll probably be sitting alone and trying to get a feel for everything. Um, and then read a book. Uh, that seems like a good activity for for a Wednesday. Uh, let's read a book again and tea party. Right, let's see what happens. Now the schedule that you've set will be carried out. For each weekday, Sarah will point to the randomly chosen result and, sh and those icons will appear on the right side of the screen. You do not have to click advance between days, it'll happen automatically. You can adjust the speed of activities from the preference menu. Remember, icons are only converted to resources at the end of a week. A result of a double all will double your current icons, but not your long-term knowledge resources. Playing? Okay, that was not... Mm -hmm. ah, that's... Hmm, okay. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, so they actually fill up pretty quickly, those bars. I didn't know that, but... My room. My two rooms just for me. Sarah was what was known as a parlor boarder, where other girls were quartered in standard issue single rooms. She had a large bedroom, uniquely decorated, and a separate sitting room with a comfortable sofa. My papa has filled them with beautiful things, books, velvet cushions, lace dresses, and a porcelain tea set. Hats with great feathers that bob on them, even a tiger rug to, to, rug to remind me of India. It looks like a room that would belong to the daughter of a Raja, an Indian prince, princess. I only wish that this room also contained my papa. Perhaps it does. He gave me all these things when I, and whenever I touch them I can imagine that he is with me. And when I read his farewell letter I can hear his voice. My dear little missus, so here you are in the place you always knew you must go. But be of good cheer. You will not have to stay for a very long time. 
There will be a lot of little girls and you will play together and I will send you plenty of books and you will grow so fast that it will seem scarcely a year before you are big enough and clever enough to come back to take care of Papa. I am not in the least anxious about your education. You are always sitting with your little nose burrowing into books, gobbling them up as if you were a little wolf instead of a little girl. I have instructed Miss Minchin to drag you away from your books when you read too much and make you go ride your pony in the row or buy a new doll. You ought to play more with dolls. Oh, Papa, I bought a new doll. If I bought a new doll every day, I should have too many to be able to make friends with them all. I am happiest with just Emily, and happier because I was with you when I met her. Emily, of course, was the name of a doll, a very special doll that Sarah had discovered when her papa took her to visit the premier toy shops of London. She was a large doll, but not too large to carry about easily. She had naturally curling golden brown hair, which hung like a mantle about her, and her eyes were a deep clear grey blue with soft thick eyelashes, which were real eyelashes and not mere painted lines. At Sarah's insistence, she had been given a wardrobe every bit as grand as Sarah's own, with frocks and coats and nightgowns and beautiful lace-trimmed underthings. She even had her own tiny lady handkerchief and her own cradle bed at the foot of Sarah's. Oh, that's actually very pretty. A lot of hair for a girl for a doll that size, but... Sarah lifted Emmy up onto her lap, smiled at her, just as she would to any another little girl. My papa is on the sea now, Emily. We must be very great friends to each other, intimate friends, and tell each other things. Look at me, Emily. You have the nicest eyes I ever saw, but I wish you could speak. She brushed Emily's hair fondly, setting her in a, in a pride of palace, a place. There are so many girls in this school. I have never seen so many children in one place before. I am afraid I shall not even remember all of their names. I've always known that someday I would be required to go away, to leave my home and my papa to come to England to be educated. I must do my duty, even if I do not like it. I dare say soldiers, even brave ones, don't really like going into battle, but they must do it anyway and not cry and fuss. So must I. But, oh, it's so lonely. She could not know, of course, how her, her quiet sorrow might be misinterpreted by others. Miss Minchin, the proprietor, had seen the lavish preparations for Sarah's pretty little room and concluded that here was a child who had always been given her own way at the expense of others. Such a spoiled little girl might be expected to kick and scream and set the whole house into an uproar when abandoned by her only parent. That she did not suggest that she did not suggest it to Miss Minchin that Sarah cared nothing at all for her papa, but only for her dresses and toys. Such was not a thought that inspired sympathy in her heart for the newcomer. Just then there came a sound at the door of Sarah's room. Sarah was not a girl easily given to fear or startlement, but she had a healthy share of curiosity and went at once to see what it was. Outside sat a little girl, right on her bottom in the middle of the hall. Her baby plump legs splayed and the lace of her petticoats askew as if she had just tumbled over, which in fact she had. Hello there, who might you be? Laddie. Her words were hard to make out through the fingers she had shoved in her mouth. Laddie? The fingers were withdrawn and wiped dry among the frills of her skirt. Laddie Day. Sarah smiled. Here, then, was the chance to meet just one person at a time instead of a crowd of strangers. Well then, I am Sarah Crew, and now we are properly introduced. She held out her hand and helped the little girl to her feet. Was there something you wanted? Can I? Might I? May I look at your doll? Of course you may. Come and visit me in my room and we can have tea together. My papa left me with a beautiful tea set with lilies painted on it. Emily has her own service as well, so size for her hand, because she's too small to hold on to one of my cups. I want to see! Come inside then and I will introduce you to Emily. And that was Sarah's first week of classes at Miss Minchin's Select Seminary for Young Ladies. Ooh. Oh, so depending on how things go along. Ah, I see. On the weekends, you can spend the resources you have collected in order to unlock scenes with different characters. 
The requirements for each event will be listed in the box next to the character. If an event requires 5 belief, you must have at least 5 belief on the left hand side of the screen in order to select play event. Playing that event will lower your current belief by 5. Oh, so it sort of takes away, that's why they call them resources, I see. Some scenes will not be available until later in the story, others can only be played early in the game. Pay attention to the requirements, it's best to focus your attention on only 2 or 3 characters in order to have time to play all of the scenes. Well, Jesse seems kind of nice, so... Ooh! Well, ah, there are more girls here. No, I don't want to skip an event. I don't know what this is costing. Hello, Sarah. May I come in to visit? Sarah rose to her feet at once. You're very welcome. Please, come inside. Jessie stepped into the room, then held out her skirt to drop a delicate curtsy and greeting. I know we've been introduced, but I wish to make your acquaintance more personally. And without Lavi listening in... Uh, Lavinia? I thought you and she were the best of friends. Of course we are. I adore her. She's so classic, so elegant and focused. I admire her very much. However, sometimes it's nicer to do things for oneself. Are those real silk stockings you're wearing? Sarah blinked. Coroner wears by this change of topic. Yes, I have several pairs. My papa took me to many shops while he was in London. They're darling. Mine are only little, little cotton. May I see the pattern? Sarah sat down in her comfortable armchair, lifting the hem of her skirt slightly so that the floral embroidery over her ankle was visible. What little feet you have! I never saw such little feet. Um, are they small? She raised her leg a bit, pointing her toes and moving her foot this way and that. They seem the same size as they have always been, even though I know they must have been smaller when I was younger. I'm sure that Lottie's feet are smaller than mine, and Emily's, of course, are the smallest of all. Emily? Emily's the doll that my papa bought to be my companion. Sarah stood up and lifted Emily into her arms for Jesse to admire. Emily? This is Jesse Appert, my new friend. The older girl dropped a beautiful curtsy, then laughed. Oh, she has silk stockings too! Stockings for such teeny tiny feet! How cute! But you do have a small feet for your height, Sarah. I'm sure you do. Look at mine. Jessie pressed her foot up alongside Sarah's for comparison. I just don't know whether larger or smaller feet are better. For dancing, I mean. If you dance with a partner, small feet would be better to avoid being stepped on. And they look very stylish in slippers. Slippers are cuter if they are smaller. But larger feet might be better for holding positions than standing on your toes. Small feet may not be as strong. Your feet have a good shape, though. They arch well. They are very pretty. Can feet be pretty? Colonel Grain's little daughter Isabel in India was the prettiest girl I ever knew. All the gentlemen said she was the beauty of the regiment. She has dimples and round rose-colored cheeks, pale blue eyes and long curling hair of the color of gold. And everyone said those things were very pretty. No one ever spoke of her feet. I suppose, if feet can be pretty, then perhaps I do have pretty feet. I know the rest of me is not. My hair is too black and straight and short, and I'm too thin, and my eyes are a strange color. You do not have the same kind of beauty that dolls are made of, but that doesn't mean you aren't pretty. I think you are quite interesting to look at. Sarah did not wish to contradict her new friend, who had no reason to lie, but her inner conviction that she was an ugly little girl could not so easily be dispelled. Will you show me the rest of your dolls and clothes? Do all of your petticoats have so many lace frills? Do you... Do you think any of them would fit me? I don't know. I suppose we can find out. New week. Oh, this is... This is... This is lovely! Like, it isn't... So far, it doesn't feel like uh, you're getting punished for choosing something that's quote-unquote wrong. I mean, obviously there is multiple ways that you can play this, but I definitely think this is interesting. It's it's a lovely, fresh breath of air away from Onichen. I know I keep mentioning it, and honestly, I hate myself for doing so, because I kind of just want to remove the videos... Um, from my YouTube feed, but, well, sometimes you make content that you're not proud of, but it's still content, so yeah. 
Anyway, that has been the first episode of A Little Lily Princess. So, I'm very much into this. Um, like I said in the start of this, simulators and uh, games like these resource managers and such is definitely not my forte. I usually end up going for uh, either one very particular stereotype or try to get a balanced out in everything which to my experience usually gives a bad ending because you didn't go enough for either one of the other selections. Anyway, so until next time, where we shall head on, take on the next week, take care.